fascinating already to see all the different ways just in the first three speakers of how we tell stories. And when um, I was asked to come and talk about storytelling and advertising and marketing, I thought, well, some people might not get this because a lot of times I think we think about advertising and marketing as pushing products on people and side-by-side -side comparisons, and those aren't really great stories. But I think that in this industry, um, storytelling is when we're at our best, when we understand that brands do have stories to tell. And this word is in a little bit of contention in our industry right now. In fact, uh, Ray Anamato, who is the chief creative officer of AKQA, a very um, great agency, uh, tweeted last week at Advertising Week that officially storytelling um, in the advertising and marketing business was dead. And um, I don't feel that way. In fact, I don't know if you all have it, but I have, a, I have a belief that storytelling will be over when the world is perfect. And I don't think we're there yet. So I think we got a, a lot of stories to tell. So um, I was trying to think when, when uh, I was approached to talk about this, I thought, all right, when was the first time that I remember being told a story through advertising? And I think it was when I was about 14 years old. Um, I was living in Greenville, South Carolina. I was down in the basement of our house watching Star Search with Ed McMahon, so it was a long time ago. And um, I was on this kind of green, uh, black and gold and yellow carpet. It was not pretty, but it had been really cheap at the store. So it just, it just that was sort of my world. And this ad came on that you know, I later learned was shot by Ridley Scott. Um, and it started off with this beautiful blonde woman, and she walks onto this green grass towards this beautiful glimmering pool and she sort of drops her cover up and sits down and then this man appears mysteriously at the other end of the pool who you know now I would describe as the international man of mystery but at the time I was like just I'd never seen a man like this and he dives in and then a plane comes up over her and I remember when what is that this is a world I've never seen. Who, who are these people? Where do they live? Where do you see a pool that sits in the middle of grass and not concrete? And I think that's what stories do. I think stories t show us worlds that maybe we've never known, and then we picture ourselves in it. And you know, I don't know if that's the reason when I was 21 I got on a plane and moved to New York City, but something got my attention in that piece of storytelling that sort of shifted me. And I think that um, the stories that we tell in advertising and marketing and the stories that you know, we tell out in the world are, are similar, which is that sometimes we tell stories that make you think. Sometimes we tell stories that make you laugh. Uh, we believe it, um, at Leo Burnett, I, I love this philosophy, which is that on our best day, and we have a lot of bad days in advertising where we don't get our stories right or we just get lazy and don't tell a story. But on our best day, I think we start to change the way people feel, maybe the way they live. And perhaps, you know, there's a possibility that through storytelling and advertising and marketing, we might be able to change the world. Um, so I, you know, the, another thing that I like about storytelling and advertising, in, and it might be changing now, but I always loved the finite time. You know, that I grew up um, when film was dominant, and you had 15, 30, or 60 seconds to tell a story. And that's, there's an art to that just in and of itself. I, um, I always liked knowing that we were done at 60 or we were done at 30. And I love my um, father came by an editing studio years ago, and we were supposed to go out to dinner. And he said, well, when can we go? And I said, well, we've got a 60-second spot, and it's coming in at 62, so we've got to cut two seconds out of it. He said, well, that should take two seconds, right? <laughs> and an hour later... Uh, he was arguing and going, no, if you don't have the smile from that guy, it just completely ruins the story. You know, so put the eyeball bulge out and keep the smile. You know? and, um, so it's a really fun art form, this short story um, telling. Another thing that's interesting about storytelling and advertising and marketing is I, I grew up in um, dance and um, theater. And when I came into it, I started treating brands and products like characters. So I always thought of them as like, what's their role? What's their purpose? What do they do? And that made it a fun way to tell a story. And it's kind of interesting. Um, again, I, I kind of like the structure of advertising and marketing. So we actually, instead of me going, what am I interested in? What stories do I want to tell? I actually am told, here's your character, this brand or this product. Now go tell a story about it. And I like, I like having that structure. Um, so that's kind of uh, what, what I think about storytelling in 
um, this business. And I thought, you know, better than um, talking a lot about it, I would just show you some of the stories I've told over the past 25 years. Um, and I'm going to start with the first story I got to tell back in the 80s. Um, so we'll just let this real play, and hopefully you'll enjoy some of them. Well, it's all come down to this. 60 million trillion fans are waiting for this one last play. You know it's going to Dow Jenkins. He moves left, he moves right, he's double teamed, triple teamed, the whole team teamed. Whoa! Now, the only thing between him and the basket is his big, ugly brother, Wesley. He gives him the old shake and bake. His mom's crying, souls is dead. Boy, is his brother jealous. He looks at the clock. Four seconds, three, two, he leaps, he He was fouled! He was fouled! The crowd's going wild! For all of you who ever dreamed of playing big-time basketball, Pizza Hut and the NCAA would like to say thanks for making it great. Well, it's all come down to this. 60 million trillion fans are waiting. What are you doing? What? You're eating M&Ms. Yeah, so are you. I'm not an M&M. &M. You don't eat your own kind, it's unnatural. Here, give me the Ooh, I like crispy. Give me the bags. Oh, it's just disturbing. Kenny, uh -huh. I need 50 pounds of roast beef. Sorry, Pat, we're all out. Oh, don't give me that. What, did your wife wolf it down for breakfast? <laughs> that came out wrong. Look, she's, she's, she's not, she's, look at me. I mean, we're probably, we probably wait a, The simple joy of generosity. I'm a teenage girl. My BFF Becky Texan says she's kissed Johnny. Well, that's a problem, because I like Johnny. Now, I'm emotionally compromised and whoopsies. I'm all OMG. Becky's not even hot. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. So those are a few of the stories. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had a lot of help. So you know, earlier I was the author, but now I just get to go, yes, that's fantastic. Let's tell that story. Um, it's the benefit of being promoted. Uh, but it's interesting. Something's happening today in advertising and marketing, and I think it is a little bit of what Ray was talking about in his tweet, which is that this traditional way of telling stories about brands and the roles that they play in people's lives is shifting a little bit. I think we'll still want to do this kind of thing. I think people do enjoy it on our best day when we tell great stories. But there's something, and I was reading in um, 
the, the uh, story wars by Jonah Sachs last night. Um, thank you. Uh, but he was talking about how we're shifting from a broadcast storytelling to an, back to more of an oral tradition. And I think what we're seeing with brands today, that they are leaning more into purpose than they have in a long, long time. And they're actually starting stories that then the people are taking. And I call it the people's network. And they're deciding what stories they want to continue, what stories they want to pass around, and what stories they want to get involved with and actually add on to. And so these stories are taking longer swaths of time. And we started a story two years ago for P&G on a brand called Secret that I'm going to show you the first chapter. And we just launched what I call the second chapter um, this year with an a, a effort called Gang Up for Good. Um, so hopefully you'll see how from where, what I showed you earlier to what I'm showing you now, sort of what the oral tradition of storytelling and advertising and marketing might look like. And I'm going to say goodbye because I've got 23 seconds and this is a two minute video. So pretend like this is the orchestra going off and thank you very much. Ashley, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sorry for the rumors I made up about you being so promiscuous. Um, it is really hard for me to apologize, but you didn't deserve that. And I'm really sorry, and I hope you can one day forgive me for that. I'll never forget being in junior high and something really crummy happened to me. Maggie, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I am sorry. And that is why I'm here, to apologize to you. I'm sorry I didn't speak up. And I wish I could take it back because you were my best friend. And I am sorry for what I did to you. And if I could go back to that night and if I had a chance to do it over, I would. And I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry, Alexis.